Beef is the worst beef. Not because I don't like the taste or anything, but because it pr produces the largest carbon and water footprint, besides lamb. Uh, 1,799 gallons of water are needed to, produce, needed to produce one pound of beef, according to National Geographic study. While it only takes 576 gallons to make a pound of pork. What can we do to be more environment environmentally friendly with our diets? We can start with small steps, such as cutting out more harmful meats, skipping meat once a week, and just being more aware of our waste. Meat uses a lot more water and land, with less payoff. So what? The reality of the matter is that as the population increases and resources need to go further, each of us will have to make accommodations. Biology is my strong suit. However, big environmental science this year has opened my eyes to a lot of issues. Researching this topic has taught me a lot about the precarious situations we're curr currently in. Today we'll be discussing carbon and water footprints, our food, the impact our food has on our population, and meatless Mondays. In our consumer's world, it becomes very easy to forget where our food comes from. Uh, as a result of increasing global trade in feed crops and animal products and the growth of meat preservation over long periods of time, consumers of animal products have often become spatially disconnected from the processes necessary to produce the products. So the link between animal products and freshwater consumption is not well known. And behind me on this is just, this is in liters, not gallons, this graph is, so it takes 650 liters to produce a slice of toast. Uh, 750 liters to produce a pack of cane sugar, 90 for tea, and 840 for coffee. Uh, as I mentioned before, one pound of beef requires 1,799 gallons of water to make. And that kind of, that kind of breaks it down up here, that's for feed, for the land that, that needs to be watered to feed them, and processing and transportation. It takes 449 gallons for rice, 119 for potatoes, 660 gallons for a single like basic hamburger, and then 132 gallons for wheat, which is probably the best option. And not only does uh, meat take up more of a water footprint, it also has a huge carbon footprint. Uh, from the book Carbon Footprints of Food and Animal Origins by Jahard Flasky and Joseph Campus, it is said that livestock production contributes about 18% to the global anthropogenic GHG emissions. This is a graph made by the Environmental uh, Protection Group. There, as you can see, that the meat productions are very high compared to like lentils, the smallest, and the yellow part is actually post -pro post production. So the green is what it takes to feed them and all that, and the yellow is taking in transportation, retail, cooking, and waste disposal. Uh, it is stated that at least 20% of meat products in the U.S. are wasted and thrown away, according to how meat and dairy are making their carbon footprint. Of our total greenhouse gas emissions, cars, trucks, and power plants seem to be the biggest contributors to climate change. But the elephant in the room is that our consumption of meat is actually the leading cause. When its effects and byproducts are taken together, animal agriculture accounts for about half of global emissions. On average, each American eats 275 pounds of meat a year. That's like every man, woman, and child eating a quarter pounder every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There are over 1.5 billion cows on Earth, and each one emits 65 gallons of methane a day as they digest their food. And methane is a potent greenhouse gas, trapping 25 times more heat in our atmosphere than carbon dioxide. And when it just comes to sheer waste, 2,500 dairy cows are equivalent to a city of over 400,000 people. Every minute, the animals raised for food in the U.S. produce 7 million pounds of waste. But where does it all go?
This is our carrying capacity, as has been predicted by many scientists. If we use all of our resources perfectly, if we develop our technology even more, we can sustain this many people. The problem with this comes from the fact that there isn't enough arable land, enough land to farm, to reach these numbers if we continue consuming meat at the rate we currently are. Uh, if all farmland were used to produce crops, we would be fine. We have enough land to support the population of 10 billion. However, according to Harvard University socio sociobiologist Edward Wilson, while maximum efficiency could support our final population, the that only accounts for if the entire population were to willingly become vegetarian. That same amount of land can only support 2.5 billion U.S. omnivores. It comes down to the fact that we won't be able to live this way for much longer, not with our population growth, when it finally stabilizes at 10 billion, which is what the graph shows. So what can we do? A simple way that we can help cut down our meat consumption is to skip meat once every day, just like the term meatless Monday refers. Uh, if you cut out meat once a day, every week with your family and friends, it becomes a lot easier to keep track of what you're eating and what you <laughs> have to reject. Um, it helps with accountability and gives you more creative ideas to get protein sources. Uh, you can go even further and cut out all animal products for a day, like dairy and eggs. And if you don't want to even do that, you can be more conscious of your decisions, such as beef is worse than chicken, so choose chicken more often than you choose beef. It's like the advice of turning off lights when you're not using them, or turning off the tap when you're brushing your teeth. Conservation will help us get through this. The future odds are looking a little grim. However, we can still make change in our lives by changing our ways. We've talked a little bit about carbon and water footprints, our population stabilizing, and a little bit about what we can do without drastic changes by actions as simple as cutting out meat once a week. I'd like to urge all of you, to, knowing what you do now, to consider cutting back on your weekly meat consumption, even if it's just by choosing some chicken instead of beef. Soon we'll be going through some major changes, but that doesn't mean we have to sit back and watch all of our, habitat, all of our habits disappear around us.